Hey guys, Alex Otis here. Today we're going to be talking about keyboards, as usual. Uh, in particular, we're going to be focusing down on things like the group buy method and why vendors use them, why they choose to use them, and how to get your hands on certain things, because I know it's been a very, very, very common question that I've been getting lately in my comments. Uh, as well as have a mini review on my Rami keyboard. That's that blue one that you guys always see. Should be this guy right over here. Um, that one there, I've been posting a lot on Instagram lately and you guys really seem to be enjoying that. So figured might as well talk about it. It's probably my favorite keyboard on the market. It's my dream keyboard as well. And that particular color too. All right guys, let's dive right into the content. Uh, so a few things, group buys. So group buys are the primary way that you're gonna find a lot of this stuff on the market right now. So those work in three stages, usually. First, there's always going to be an interest check. Interest checks are usually going to be posted months in advance, sometimes a month in advance, uh, to the actual production group buy. So what I mean by that is a vendor will say, hey, this is the potential product we want to sell you guys. Are you guys interested? Usually people will go, hey, yeah, I'm interested and sign up. The next step for the vendor after that would be creating a group buy. So this is basically going to be what everyone kind of sees on the surface level. Uh, it's, hey guys, if we get 50 people who sign up for this, we will make it. So their minimum order quantity, their MOQ, is gonna be 50. Sometimes these are capped at a certain amount as well. So sometimes you will see a vendor saying, hey, 50 is the minimum, but we can only make 150 to fulfill their time frame. Um, why vendors do this? This is probably the bigger question. I get this a lot. Like uh, for example, Bob Keycaps, who makes those Gengar keycaps. That's probably the most requested keycap I get on my page. Uh, those are going to be, again, group buys. You have to get in on them the moment he posts those. And usually you have a 24 hour window. That's how many orders he actually gets. Why they do this though, it's that exact reason. If they continually get orders, they will not be able to fulfill them. Now you can sit there and go, well, why don't they just hire a team? Usually these are small companies and individuals who want to create products for you guys or for just the community, anyone in that niche, you know, hobby and they just can't fulfill and sustain that environment of hiring people. Uh, for example, space cables. So they actually started hiring as well and getting people on board to make cables. However, again, if they left their website open 24 seven, instead of doing the group by method, which they're doing now, he would never be able to fulfill those orders on the scale that he is now. And that's actually one other thing too with group buys guys. Uh, group buys usually have a fixed amount of time and where this product is being manufactured. Uh, so if there is a 90 day lead time for these, you know, expect roughly 90 days. If it says approximately 70 to 90 days, um, I'd always say pick the 90 days, be better safe than sorry in what you expect. Now, you might be asking, well, how do I get notified for a lot of these things? Because a lot of people ask me for that too. For example, those Koi Fish Space Bars by Jelly Key, everybody asks me for those. That's long gone. You cannot get those from them anymore. They do one-time runs like most other companies do. And I say most because not everyone just does one-time runs. That's over and done with. I think the, the thing they did after that which generated a lot of hype was their dragon keycaps. I don't know what they have planned next, but this is just one of those instances where you wanna keep tabs on the company that you wanna buy things on or follow accounts or Instagram accounts or just some sort of newsletter or news outlet that would let you guys know what's going on in the community. The community is growing really, really quickly. I've seen that firsthand, especially over the last few months where everyone wants to get into mechanical keyboards. Uh, but we have to remember that a lot of these vendors are smaller. It's not mass production like Corsair, or Razer, or anything like that. That's why they do it on group buys methods and such a smaller scale than these bigger companies. And I've spoken to companies like Prime Caps, Door Factory, etc. They're all on the kind of the same page. I think they're just, there needs to be that I guess outreach or transparency in this case here, that this is why those methods exist. The way they do is because of the smaller teams, right? I think uh, Prime Caps is only run by two people. Um, even myself, when it comes down to content creation, and I'm sure a lot of other people can say the same thing. I'm one person. I'm potentially bringing someone else onto the team down the road to help me with articles and whatnot. But again, there's only so much I could do. It just comes down to a level of what they wanna be doing with their own brand too. Uh, so before we jump the gun and start boo and shaming people for, you know, not being able to make you a keycap or a keyboard in this case, those are usually the reasons why they do them. And I guess that begs the question, well, Alex, how do you get all your stuff? Well, I'm not always browsing the internet for keycaps. I know it might seem that way, um, but I'm not. I'm actually subscribed to a lot of these guys. I talk to them on sometimes a daily basis. I know I talk to Space Cables almost once a day. Um, I'm friends with a lot of people in the community as well. I think it comes down to that too, is you have to just be personable and 
be willing to be a community in a community aspect. Uh, another really great place you can go to if you happen to miss a group buy is Mech Market. And that's actually where I get, I'm gonna say 65 to 75% of my stuff, or I get it from someone who just wants to resell it, right? I know that kind of sounds shitty, but it's what it is, right? That's that's the hobby for anything. Look at Nike shoes, look at those off-white shoes, right? All right, guys, now we're gonna talk about my Rama keyboard. I know you guys have all been asking me tons of questions about that. One thing I do wanna address first though, the Tofu keyboard. I'm still getting questions about that. I will do a video, I promise, promise, promise you guys, it's probably my coolest keyboard when it comes down to RGB stuff. I don't really have anything else like it. Check out my website, alexodos.com. There's gonna be a link on the top for the Tofu keyboard. It tells you how to get the parts from KBD fans, if you want the pre-assembled version, all that kind of good stuff. Coming soon as well, guys, there is gonna be kind of a lubricating switch section or just a switch sound test section as well. So keep your eyes on that. There's gonna be some really cool things that are gonna be appearing with that in the near future. So I'm really excited. But yeah, the, the RAM is probably gonna be the best keyboard that I have right now in terms of the way it feels, the way I like typing on it. It's sound is insane for what it is too. Uh, currently what I have loaded in it is a Telios V2s. Those are lubed with Crytox 205G0 and they're actually filmed as well. So some other things too, guys, I have those Telio switches and everything about the spacebar. The reason why I went with that is just because I like how silent the spacebar is like that. It just feels good. I didn't really like the Telios on the spacebar. It's personal preference and that's the really the beauty about these. So some other really cool things about the Rama, it's a unibody as well. And I believe that's 4.5 millimeters thick of uh, aluminum. It's all gonna be anodized, which is awesome. It feels great. It has a textured base as well. When you're picking it up, it feels really, really good in the hands. Not that you'd pick it up much unless you're bringing it around places. It has um, feet on it, which feel really, really good too. It doesn't slide around at all. Now mine does have an internal weight inside of it. So that's another reason for it not to move around. It does weigh a hefty amount. I'm not sure the exact amount of weight with everything that I have on it right now. I can find that out for you guys soon and maybe post it on Instagram. But guys, this thing's a tank. It's not moving anywhere. Some other really cool things, it is a PCB that's hot swap, meaning that you can actually take out your switches and put new ones in on the fly. Uh, kind of on the fly. You wouldn't really want to do it while you're playing a video game. That's just kind of awkward. But what I did was I actually had these loaded with uh, a different switch when it was sent to me. And I got that from Mr. Keebs, by the way, because I missed this group buy. Uh, so shout out to Mr. Keebs, link will be in the description for him. He has really, really cool live builds. I really like the guy, he's fantastic. Um, but I had mine done with Hacko Clears at the beginning. I took those out, switched it out for Securos. Didn't really feel like the way that the Securos felt. They were kind of mushy, lubed the Securos as well. Still kind of mushy, didn't really like the way they felt. Went back to my personal favorite being Telios. Those things are awesome. So those are gonna be the my, my dream build. So it's blue, you know, blue base with a PCB by Wilba, who is hot swap and then it has Telios with a blue top on that. Looks fantastic. It has the brass PVD on the back as well. Uh, so it looks really, really, really professional and really well done. And that's what you can really expect from something like Rama. And that's where you're paying the premium there, right? I believe retail, this went for close to 450 to start, uh, but it's something again that you buy once and this is gonna you know, potentially last you the rest of your, I guess your gaming days, right? But some other things to note too about the Rama keyboard. Um, with it being anodized finished as well, it, it looks fantastic. It has more of a matte finish to it, so it's not glossy. The glossy part is that PVD brass on the back, which is almost like a mirror coating. It looks fantastic. I have photos of it. Uh, I'm gonna try shooting some video of it too as well. So hopefully there's some B-roll that gets mixed into this, uh, but it is a fantastic looking keyboard. So past that guys, I have GMK Nautilus keycaps on the top, as well as an arrangement of artisan keycaps. Uh, but that's gonna be the Rama. It's just a little mini review, just kind of explain what it is and just show it off a little bit more. I know everyone's been kind of asking about that. It does have RGB behind it as well. And the programming on that RGB is actually some of the better ones that I've seen. It does have software as well, which I really, really respect from you know, a keyboard manufacturer. I like the ability to not just hit hot keys all the time on the keyboard, which you still can do, but I like reprogramming some of the keys on the fly without having to load up a QMK or just whatever program you'd have to use to flash it. This is a lot nicer. And guys, I know this is something that everyone's probably been wondering, but how does the Rama keyboard sound with those lube switches? Well, it sounds a little bit like this.
Like I mentioned, guys, there's going to be a bunch of stuff coming as well in my last video. Uh, so we have things like a keycap giveaway coming soon. I'll spill the beans on that a little bit. It's a keycap, the one of five keycap giveaway. There might be more coming out soon by them, but I'm, I'm not going to spoil too much. It's a really, really cool looking keycap. I love it. We're going to give away two of those. Uh, and then on top of that, there's going to be some other really, really cool goodies inside there too. Uh, down the road, I'd love to, you know, potentially give away a tofu. I know everyone's been asking me that. But that's everything guys. I really appreciate you guys again, giving me love and support. I know you guys really liked the last video. I really, really appreciate that too. We're trying to make all these videos fun. Uh, leave your comments down below if you guys have any suggestions or things that you wanna be, I guess, seeing in the next video or talking about in the next video. Uh, past that guys, I think the next video, I know we did keyboards this time here and kind of the group by method. I might be breaking down some of the parts and kind of what goes into a custom build next time. Uh, but again, just keep on tuning in guys. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you guys think about this video and see you guys later.